Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. As a follow-up to my last video where I talked about AI photo retouching, today I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Retouch For Me AI plugins on a typical headshot contract. One of the things that I notice when watching any demonstrations for these plugins is that every photo is of a very young model who has skin blemishes but no wrinkles. Since I'm not a fashion photographer, but I shoot a lot of business portraits and headshots, I wondered how this would fit into my workflow. The main difference being that I don't want my clients to look like models, but more like the best version of themselves. Using studio lighting on people does tend to accentuate wrinkles, so that's a big part of the touch-up. Not to remove them, but to at least diminish them. For this demonstration, I've taken six photos from a head shoot and will go through my steps from start to finish, from the original photo to the final product. The first step doesn't involve the Retouch For Me plugins, but does prepare them so the plugins can be used afterward. This first step is my own technique that I use to diminish wrinkles. The reason that I use this method is because Retouch For Me doesn't yet have a plugin for wrinkles and the technique doesn't take a lot of time. The second step involves just running nine plugins with no added input from me, followed by step three where I adjust the layers that are created by the plugins. You can see in the demonstration which plugins are being used. After the demonstration, I'll break down how long each section took and the total time based on my computer configuration. Enough yapping for me, time to edit. Typically what I like to do whenever I'm doing a retouch on a face is I like to start with the wrinkles. I don't like to obliterate them all completely since I want things to look as realistic as possible. But what I do like to do is make it so that they are diminished somewhat. First thing I'd like to do is create another layer um, above the original so that I can then use the healing tool to, the, to get completely get rid of all the wrinkles as much as possible. After I'm done getting rid of all the wrinkles, then I go to that layer that I've done that with and then I change the opacity so that um, you can bring the wrinkles back to some degree but have them diminished. That's what I'm doing in this and um, have sped that up so that you can see what I've done. Now following that with the rest of them, I'm just going to blast through these as fast as possible so that you don't have to wait. But just so that you know, in the end, all of these uh, edits for all six of the images that I'm working on took a total of four minutes and 30 seconds. The next part of the process is to open up the Retouch For Me panel to access the batch mode. Once you're in there, open up your panel settings. Now once inside, select Process Subfolders and make sure that the output format is set to PSD. This will ensure that each plugin will create a separate layer that can be adjusted after processing. This only has to be done the first time you open up the panel. Now with those settings in place, we can select which plugins we would like to include in the batch process. Once selected, click on Batch Process and select the directory of images that you would like to have processed all at once. And now it's going to run through this entire process for all six images. So that's six images times nine plugins, and that will uh, create a separate layer on each PSD for these and create a separate PSD in a subfolder beneath the subfolder that I created for these images. Now I'm going to speed this up like crazy and get right back to the end. After the plugins have finished running in batch mode, you can go to Finder and see that underneath your editing folder, Retouch For Me has created a subfolder called Retouched. This means that your original images have not been affected and you now have layered PSD files that can now be opened up in Photoshop for adjustments. Now that we're in Photoshop, you can see to the right of the image that we have layers corresponding to all of the plugins that were run earlier. I've taken the liberty of turning off the layers so that we can turn them back on one by one and decide how to adjust them. Starting with the fabric layer, I noticed at first that the shirt is a bit too smooth, so I'm going to adjust the opacity and bring it down to a level that still looks realistic. It's not perfect, but it looks better than it did in the beginning, yet not fake. Now moving away from the fabric and onto the face, I'm going to turn on the eye vessel and eye brilliance layers, both of which are fine as is. Teeth whitening is a little bit bright for my taste, so I'm adjusting the opacity to make them a little darker. Mattifier is always a bit extreme for, my, for me, so I'm going to lower that down to close to 30%, which seems to be my typical amount, and in this case 39% works. The dodge and burn is a bit too intense for a male face. I'm going to bring that down a bit. It still looks a lot better than the original, 
and the skin tone takes away some of the reds so I'm going to leave it as is because it helps a lot. Now for the rest of the images I'm going to blast through these at full speed since you don't need to see me doing the same thing for all of them. I'm going through the exact same process as I did for the first image so let's just run through those and we'll see what the results are in the end. At this point I save the image in two different ways. I save the PSD file with all of the layers intact in case I need to edit it further. And I save each image as a JPEG for the client. This way if they come back with any changes you are already 95% of the way there. One thing that I would like to mention is that you can also tune the plugins to the strength level that you are happy with. For example, I notice that I tend to use the Mattifier plugin at 30% most of the time. Rather than using it at 100% and then adjusting it after, I just set it for 30% now and it's very close to what I want. I can still increase it afterward while adjusting the layers. I'm not going to show you how to do that at the moment, but it's done through the Retouch For Me panel in Photoshop. Let's have a look at how long it took to edit six images. Step one, or the wrinkle minimizing step, which again has nothing to do with Retouch For Me, took a total of four minutes and 30 seconds. To run nine Retouch For Me plugins on the six images, it took a total of 14 minutes and 58 seconds, or two and a half minutes each. This part will vary greatly depending on how many plugins you have activated and how fast your computer is. Step three, where I adjust the opacity level of the nine layers created by the plugins, took just over seven minutes. I wasn't rushing anything, but I think this would be a pretty average time. This all adds up to a total of 11 minutes and 35 seconds of my time to edit six photos and about 15 minutes of computation time. Since I'm able to do other work during the computation time, this greatly improves my productivity. Now this adds up to a total of about 4 minutes and 24 seconds for each image from start to finish, and about a minute and 55 seconds of me working on each image. This is compared to about 15 to 20 minutes for this level of touch-up per image without the plugins. It's also much less tedious. If you are interested in picking these up for yourself, you can get a 20% discount by following the links below and even try them for free to see if you like them for yourself. So that does it for this review. Please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful in any way, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.